Famous Guitars, Episode 18. And you asked for it and you got it. So, right here, actually. So, for your Famous Guitars, Episode 18, we're going to feature this guitar right here. And, of course, I'm talking about Peter Frampton's 1954 Gibson Les Paul Custom, which is also known as a Black Beauty, but also known by the name Phoenix. Fascinating story behind this guitar, and uh, I'll put the link in the description here where you can find this article and the history of this just fascinating guitar and also the story behind how it got its name Phoenix. Peter Frampton's association with the Phoenix goes way back to 1970 and Humble Pie's run at the legendary Fillmore West in San Francisco. On the cusp of big things that were happening at the time, the West Coast shows were key to the band's breaking in the United States America market. But Frampton was having trouble playing the Gibson ES335 that he had at the time. Now, Frampton had recently traded his 1962 SG for the 335, a decision he was now regretting. The semi-acoustic was fine for rhythm work, but gave him a fair amount of grief when it came to lead breaks because it would feed back quite horribly and it was just embarrassing for him. So at the end of his rope by that point at the Fillmore West, Frampton was approached by his friend Mark Mariana, who offered to lend his Gibson Les Paul to, for the following night show. Frampton was wasn't really a Les Paul fan, but desperate for a usable instrument, he took Mariana up on his offer. The guitar itself was a three pickup 1954 Black Beauty that Mark had modified to look like a 1957 Les Paul Custom. For Frampton, it was love at first play. He ended up using the guitar for his entire Fillmore run. Over the next decade or so, the Phoenix became Frampton's number one axe, but that all changed during a 1980 tour in South America. Frampton and the band had just played Venezuela, and they had a day off, so they flew to Panama. The band's equipment was meant to follow by cargo plane the next day, but it never made it. The band later found out that the plane had crashed on takeoff, the crew were all killed, and the gear was all apparently destroyed, or so they were told. Frampton did send his guitar tech down a week later to survey the wreckage, and sure enough, all that remained was a couple of wrecked Marshall cabinets and some burned out guitar cases. So for about 31 years, it seemed like the plane crash, where it all happened, would be where the story of Frampton's Phoenix would more than likely end. But then in 2011, Frampton received a surprised email from someone in Holland, and it was from a guitar luthier that didn't live too terribly far away from where the tragedy happened. In the message, he claimed that the Phoenix had been brought into his workshop. What's more, he photographed every inch of the guitar for verification. The Phoenix wants to believe a charred wreck was still very much intact. Peter Frampton started playing detective at this point, and it turned out that four of his guitars, a 63 precision bass, a 55 Stratocaster, a white Les Paul, and the Phoenix had all survived the crash, but had been lifted by one of the first people on the scene who decided to sell them all for profit. And someone who lived in Venezuela at the time bought the Les Paul intending to learn to play the guitar, but really didn't do anything with it. So the instrument ended up gathering dust at his house for years until his teenage son expressed an interest in playing. The guitar by this point was in terrible shape, so the son took it to that luthier that I just spoke of earlier, and uh, said luthier, who also happened to be a customs inspector, knew what he had straight away and contacted Frampton. At first, there were problems with getting the kid to agree to sell the guitar. It was about 18 months before he agreed to part with the instrument. Then there was the luthier's own anxiety about handling a stolen guitar, which I can certainly understand that. The luthier was frightened that he could get arrested for receiving stolen goods. Frampton remembered. So instead of buying it himself, he went to the Minister of Tourism, who he knew because he was in the Customs Department, and explained the situation. So the government bought the guitar back for me for about $5,000. Finally, after convincing the luthier that he wasn't going to get the FBI involved, Frampton was able to arrange a handover in Nashville, Tennessee. He brought the guitar in the room in this thin plastic gig bag that wasn't even a case. Frampton knew before he even opened it that it was his guitar, and it was just a wonderful experience for him. And after being restored by the folks at the Gibson Custom Shop, the instrument went back into Frampton's live rig just in time for the Frampton Comes Alive 35th anniversary tour which incidentally is the same guitar that was pictured on Frampton Comes Alive. Much, much more about the story of this guitar can be found in the link there in the description, so be sure to read the entire article. But that is your famous guitar, number 18, Peter Frampton's Gibson Les Paul Phoenix guitar. Like, share, and follow for more famous guitars.